Hello again, I am Blunty, and NVIDIA plopped up a new trailer for Gotham Knights this morning. Being posted by NVIDIA, it was more about the graphical features and PC options than it was about the game, its story, or any real gameplay. But I did pay attention because I am interested in this game. I'm a bit conflicted because well, the combat looks just a little bit jank in a lot of the gameplay footage. But again, I really, really, really want this game to be awesome because, well, it's just the kind of game I want to play. Rolling around as various members of the Bat family kicking ass through Gotham City. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? So anyway, the trailer was showing off ray tracing, of course, and DLSS 2.0, which I'd not be shocked to see a patch for DLSS 3.0 in the near future. And of course, other PC specific niceties like very high frame rates and ultra wide support, which reminded me about a thing I've been meaning to make a video about for quite some time now, but apparently I keep forgetting how to fake ultra wide. In other words, how to easily make any game that supports ultra wide monitors work in a full and proper ultra wide mode on your normal 16 by 9 widescreen monitor. And you do want to give this a go, because ultrawide can be really nice for many game genres. Racing games come to mind, flight sims, some but not all first-person shooters or first-person RPGs. And I say some but not all because some of these first-person games just feel super weird or disorientating if they're rented out like way too wide, if they're not carefully designed for ultra-wide in mind, they can, they can get a bit wibbly, to me anyway. But in particular, as far as my own tastes go, quite a lot of third-person action combat games feel really nice in ultra-wide, especially those with really nicely designed worlds to immerse into, because, well, you, you see more of the world wrapping around you. Like, for example, here, Marvel's Spider-Man, with its wonderfully rendered New York City to flip all the way through. Problem is, ultra-wide monitors still call in a hefty price premium, especially for gaming appropriate ones. Second problem, almost all of them are 1080p or increasingly common, 1440p only these days. Ultra-wide in 4K is still quite rare and even more expensive. But there is a way to do ultra-wide with your existing monitor and it's super duper easy and you've already been seeing it in action in this very video. And it is just as easy to switch back to regular normal widescreen mode when you want the full screen real estate back again. And I dream of a day where this is just no longer needed and games include this kind of natively in themselves. As indeed, so did at least one person inside Capcom's development team for Monster Hunter Rise, because that game has an option right there in the graphics to just bam, instantly and seamlessly give you a letterboxed ultra wide mode on your regular monitor. Sadly, this is the only game I can name off the top of my head that will let users do this this easily. If you've got some more, please leave them in the down below. I'd be interested to hear about what other developers have been thinking about this too. But for every other game out there that doesn't do that, well, here we go. You want to bring up your NVIDIA control panel. Don't worry, Team Red folks, I will get to you in just a minute. Rest assured, your AMD Radeon cards can do this just as easily. So from here, go to the display tree, select change resolution, and by default, there's a list here of the display modes your monitor default deals with. And you may have spotted it already, but here is that one weird trick that you need to get. <laughs> Am I brave enough to call this video that one weird trick for ultra wide? I don't think I am. Here's that one weird trick you need to do. Hit the customize button. A window will come up. Check off the box for exposing resolutions not default exposed by the display. Then click the create custom resolution button. You'll probably get a warning message about how if you mess this up super crazy, it's not Nvidia's problem, it's your problem to deal with. Don't worry about it. What we're doing here is not something that will cause any such drama. That's just there because there are things in here you can fiddle with, but shouldn't that can cause some monitors to wig out a little bit. But that's not what we're doing, so relax. Hit accept. Now, you can just manually enter in an appropriate ultra-wide resolution. For regular 4K 16x9 monitors, you want to put in 3440x1440, and on a 1440p screen, 16x9, 2560x1080. And these resolutions are for faking into a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, the, the most common ultra-wide ratio. You could also do a 32 by 9 ratio this exact same way if you really want to, but at that point you're giving up way too much of the screen real estate for letterboxing. It's not really worth it, in my humble opinion. But you could try it. It works fine. Now hit test. 
and it should all work fine. If something does go wrong and you get no image coming up at all, do not panic, it's fine. The software will automatically revert back to its default settings after a short 20 second long timeout. If it does work, you have that 20 seconds in which you can hit the button to confirm that it works and it will save this new setting for you. From now on, it'll just sit in that list of resolutions in the NVIDIA control panel ready for you to quickly select any time you want to play a game in ultra wide. And when you're done, you just select your normal resolution and go back. Now, for those of you with AMD cards, it is a nearly identical process, just with AMD's somewhat friendlier UI in front of you. Bring up the Radeon settings. Fastest way to do that is a desktop right click, select display, hit the create custom resolution button, click past the warning. Once more, a minor tweak like we're doing here isn't anything that will worry any monitor out there. This warning's really only here if you're jiggering about with, with, with trying to change sort of into an out of spec refresh rate or some other crap. That can cause issues. Don't do that unless you really know what you're doing. So adjust the vertical resolution number as I spoke about before, same numbers and save. Now it's all the same deal. You can switch into and out of this custom ultra wide resolution anytime you like with a couple of clicks before you boot up your game. I have been using this trick for ages now with a couple of different monitors and I have never had any issue at all with it. As far as the game is concerned, the GPU is talking to it as if the screen it was displaying to was a normal ultra wide native monitor. Same thing with the Windows desktop or your web browser or any other app you need to alt tab away from the game for whatever reason. It all thinks it's running on an ultra wide because that's what the display driver is telling it it's dealing with. And on the monitor side, well, your GPU hardware is processing everything internally as if it was ultra wide, but it's outputting that letterbox signal so that your screen is getting the signal it expects to get that is a 16 by 9 signal the only difference is it's letterboxed so nothing janky is happening here. it's not just cutting off the top and bottom and putting black bars there the gpu is behaving as if that the ultra wide resolution is the normal native output and so long as the game you're running supports ultra wide resolutions its graphic settings should now present you with the appropriate settings to choose from even your capture cards and such will behave normally. As to them, well, they see a normal 16x9 HDMI signal just like your monitor does because that's what's being output over the HDMI or whatever. Only the game is letterboxed because that's what the GPU is feeding to your 16x9 screen as we just talked about. So it all works seamlessly. The only hitch you will ever hit is... Well, hopefully the game you're playing is from a dev with half a brain so the UI elements and everything else behave properly too. Not so much an issue these days, but some older games, and I'm talking sort of, of seven or more years back, back from when ultra wide was a lot less common. Well, some devs took some annoying shortcuts to provide ultra wide support, like literally just chopping off the top and bottom of the scene instead of properly expanding it horizontally like you would expect it to do. And also sometimes I don't really account for the UI going to ultra wide. So sometimes the UI elements get a bit janky or in the way or don't, you know, spread to the corners of the screen properly or whatever. It will be a very rare issue. And again, only affecting some older games. So keep an eye out for that. But in any modern game, it should basically be seamless and really very, very, very nice for many, many, many games. Like indeed, I hope Gotham Knights, whose new and apparently massively bigger Gotham City compared to the other recent Batman games, should hopefully feel amazing in widescreen, much like Spidey's New York is amazing in widescreen, and much like Monster Rise is wonderful in widescreen. But there you go, that's all you need to know. Told you it was simple. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. If you have found this video interesting and or useful, please, 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 I hope you've done the thing with the sub and the bell and left a comment, etc. because it helps with the robot machine mind that drives this site and punishes me. Not because I'm naughty, just because, I don't know. We should um, stop this side path. We're getting off the track. Catch you next time.